Hey everyone, welcome back to NV Board Gaming. I'm Nick. I'm Vic. Today, we're going to take a look at Karen. It's a two-player only game published by Madigo. It is by Christian Rodriguez. Vic's going to tell you how to play, and we'll be back with our thoughts and review. All right, we are set up here for a game of Karen. It's a two-player only game. Uh, this game is very similar to chess. Um, in your action, you have a handy reference sheet that tells you everything you're going to do. So first, you're going to choose one of the three actions. You can add a shaman by spawning them at either the black or the white um, spawn areas. And this is in accordance to this token, whatever's showing. So there's a black and a white side. This is black face up. So right now, you can only add a shaman to the black area. You can move a shaman in accordance to this tile rule, which right now is just left, right, or center, ahead, that way. But if once you do the action, it actually flips. So all three of these tiles, when you do it, it'll be diagonal the next time for your opponent, or if you get to do the turn again. You can jump over a shaman, and that's according to this middle tile. Right now it's telling you that you can jump over your own shamans, and when you do that, it'll flip just like the other ones, and you can flip, then you can jump over an enemy shaman only if you were the next person to do that action. So the game really involves thinking about what you're choosing to do, because whatever you end up choosing, you know that the flip, the tile is gonna flip over to reveal the other action for your opponent. Um, so once you're finished doing one of these three actions, you will flip the action tile, as I mentioned, and check the effect to see if you have matched this. This is how you score a round where you align your shamans in this um, configuration, so it's an um, enemy in the middle. If you achieve that somewhere on this board, you will score yourself a point and it tracks up here for each side. And on the spot where the person passed, you will place one of these megaliths, which have different abilities that you can refer to on the sheet um, that I'll explain. And you'll see there's already two megaliths on this board. And if you were to land on them, it gives you the effect. So this one lets you move your shaman to another megalith. And this megalith <clears throat> lets you move your shaman in any direction when it's landed on. So you can obviously stack that up if you land it on one megalith, land on the next megalith, and move in any direction further. And once the first person achieves three trans transformations, so they've uh, completed three of these, you'll see on the other side, the other configuration is two of your own shaman and one enemy. When you've got three, you win the game. And that's how you play. All right, welcome back. So that was Vic's review. That was a pretty easy one, about two and a half minutes. I knew it would be quick. Game is basically an abstract strategy. Yeah, you're shamans, you're doing stuff, I don't know. You're, it's just like chess, where there's some kind of theme there too, but not really. Um, so we don't score on a theme. We're going to score it on gameplay as a two-player abstract strategy game. I think it might be our first one we've covered. I could be wrong. I think this is the first one we've covered. Yes. 8-6. Strong abstract strategy. I go between this and Onitama, which one I like better. I think they're both fantastic. Onitama has the expansions that I really like, so it, it could go to that just with the expansions. But as a base game, I think I like Karen a little better. This one's really good. This one's a very strong score for an abstract strategy game for me because we don't play too, too many of them. Um, I mean, it's it, it lets you get those moments where you're setting traps or you're feeling good or... You know, you're doing all these kind of things that you're trying to trick your opponent or you're just trying to make optimal moves to, for the future. Yeah. And it's not that much of a brain burner. It says uh, age is 10 plus. It's, you're going to sit there, you know, thinking about what if I do this and what's your opponent going to do. It's just like you would when you're playing Onitama and chess. It's just, you know, it's not as in-depth. So it's, it's a smaller board. You know, mm -hmm. these options ahead of you. You're always thinking, just like an Onitama, just thinking of what your opponent gets like what action what movements they get when you do your action so you're really in this game more than onitama just as much i can't say more than onitama you are really worried about what your opponent's going to get you're hoping that they do a certain action they do they flip that to you um that side to you and like okay now i got them and so forth you know it's just back and forth a good fun Vic? yeah i gave it an 8.1 um, if I was a little better, I would give it the same score as Nick. 
Um, but <laughs> I get smoked in this game. But it's okay because it's quick. You can play another game. We can do best of three. Um, and then I turn it into a best of five when, <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's me. But I, I enjoy the game uh, a lot. I wasn't much of a chess fan, actually. And Onitama, I don't reach for very often. I don't uh, ask Nick to play it. But this one, I ask him if we can play it. So that's encouraging. And I think that it's great that you uh, don't have in, uh, the shamans with different powers. It's actually a megalith, like it's a spot that you go to, uh, to have a, a power. So it adds to the, the depth of the strategy because it's not just like, okay, this, like in chess, oh, this uh, pawn does this, or this bishop does this and moves this way. They all move in accordance to the tiles that flip. So I think that's really great. And you even have to think about where you spawned your person because you have one person spawn on the black and then the white and you may have already exhausted that and you're waiting for your opponent to flip it so that you can have another chance to spawn a person and when you lose somebody when you have somebody's banished it's not like the other person takes it like in chess where they take your person you're like oh but <laughs> it's not like that so you actually get a chance to bring them back to life again if you can last that long before your opponent <laughs> i was just starting to love my rook <laughs> So I recommend you get it if you have a significant other or a friend or somebody you always play with, a brother or sister, get this game because you'll bring it to the table a lot and you'll get a lot of good value for it. Yeah, it's not that expensive, so I would say jump on this one. Yeah, and the uh, the component quality is high. It's The, the uh, miniatures are nice. They're not like cardboard standees. Mm -hmm. it's, they feel good in your hands. And uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And the reference sheet, I'm all about that. If you know me, I like a sheet that just tells you what does this do so you don't have to ask because as soon as you have to ask it ruins your whole strategy if i was saying what well, what does this do <laughs> it's going to be a problem i don't want him to have to know what am i thinking because he usually does anyways but it would be nice if he knew a little less about what i was thinking mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so check it out definitely will enjoy this game i believe like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already we will see you next time thank you so much for joining us Bye.